There's been an awakening. Have you felt it? This is Tatooine Sons, the only fan podcast to name a canon Star Wars creature and to be endorsed by the writer director of The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson. I wrote a haiku for today's episode, guys. Are you ready for my haiku? What prompted that? I don't know. I thought I'd do something different. Okay. I mean, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm it's it's a dad haiku. Okay. Well, I mean, I tried to do it, but it didn't work. But anyway, it says <laughs> podcast airs today. Heroes of Kingdom Come Speak. Tune in, take a flight. That was nice. It's a good I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima. Right yeah, now. me too. Um, we'll talk more about <laughs> Kingdom Come and the characters in it after this message from the guys over at the Reverend and the Reprobate. This is Tatooine Sons. We are the Reverend and the Reprobate, just two best buds interviewing people we have no business talking to. I'm Lucas Pinkard. I'm Dan Gibson. These every, aren't tears on my face. Every Thursday, we interview somebody else from our favorite fandoms yeah. and yours. You can check those interviews out on the Christian Nerd HQ Network. You can find us on YouTube at Rev Rep Podcast at ReverendRep.com. And if you can't remember our name, just Go to bacon office. baconoffice.com. It's way easier to find new episodes every Thursday. Thank you guys for supporting Christian Nerd HQ and check out The Reverend and the Reprobate. It's true. It's true. All of it. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that pork's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys record an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Now, as you are listening to this, where are we going to be on Tuesday? I have to decide. Well, Disney World. Oh, I don't. But I, don't I didn't take the one. schedule. I just go where Mom tells that me. That <laughs> Magic Kingdom Rapcot that we know of. So, because we'll be at Disney. I think it's. I think Tuesday is is uh, an Epcot day. Okay. Okay. So. Guardians. I'm not 100 sure. Maybe magic. I don't remember. So yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, the Tron or Guardians. This is either, either, one. either way is good. And if if we're wrong and it's Hollywood Studios, then it's that's okay. Rise of the Resistance and Smuggler's Run and Tower of Terror, Tower of Terror, and and um, is Rockin's Rockin's open. Rockin's oh, good. Open. Yeah. So that'll be fun. So you feeling okay over there, BB? No, I'm hanging in there. Fighting a cold again? Yes. Sorry about that, man. Here's what it is. We'll, we'll get through this. Welcome. Uh, well, to all of you listening right now, sorry, was ch- the dad moment was early. I was checking on my son. Uh, welcome to Tattooing Sons, a pop culture podcast. We believe that pop culture is the mythology of this generation, that there is a story. It is written on our souls and that these myths speak to that story. And that is why we are in the midst of an eight episode series looking at the iconic DC Comics graphic novel, Kingdom Come. Yes, sir. Any any amazing revelations or thoughts on this graphic novel since the last time we talked about it, or as a result of this ago? series? No, no. no. no it's I been can't. like three days since our last recording. So yeah, I haven't I haven't thought of anything. I do need to read it again, though. It was a, it was a good read. Maybe I'll read it on the uh, on the drive up to. Got eight hour something. drive down, eight hour drive back. You I could time. finish it a couple times, probably. You think so? No. You read read it in less than a day. I read it in about three hours. Yeah, so well, you're built different. So, yeah. so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> you're built different. What does that mean? What does that have to do with how he how he reads? He, have you not heard that expression? I'm not sure. I understand how you're applying it. Just built different. I don't know. He's just he's more capable of that certain thing because he's built differently. Okay. Than the rest of us. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he, my humor did not land at all he took it literally and now we had a really weird moment right. <laughs> on the show we should probably get started um we're talking about the trinity characters the exile is the name of this episode um obviously the reason is because it starts off with sort of all three of them in a in a form of exile not so much with batman but wonder woman is definitely oh, an exile yes and mm. superman is in his own self-imposed exile so i figured that makes sense right and even even batman is to an extent and he sort of pulled himself away and he's had to and that kind of thing years so. of physical toll 
That's right. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, talk a little bit about um, what's going on this in the stage of this. Let me kind of set it up with a couple questions here. Why does Kingdom Come present these, you know, super legendary classic DC heroes in this form of exile? Why does it start off like this? I mean, how do these conditions of exile sort of make the story get started, pave the way for their character development throughout the story? Yeah, it kind of, um, it really shows that this is a new era for superheroes and how the the old superheroes and the old regime of that has kind of died off and how it's it's different now. And, and so they had to exile themselves away from that and how there's this new hero rise of really anti-hero kind of um, characters. And it's kind of... <clears throat> causing these superheroes to reevaluate who they are, what their place is as superheroes in the world, and if they should change along with the new um, status quo of superheroes. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel it's, it's, it, it kind of prompts this, this moment of deeper in, in, introspection for the, the characters. Um, you know, it leads, it, a, absence and, and exile can lead to a lot of, important character growth or, or not, not even necessarily growth, but development. I mean, here we'll go, you know, I'll go there. It reminds me of, of Jesus in the desert for, oh, wow. for, yeah, for 30 days, that. you know, granted it's a very different it's 40 mindset. Days, by the way. It's huh? 40. 40 days. Sorry. 40. <clears throat> um, it's, it's a very different, um, scenario, obviously in this case, but you know, he does that because he's preparing to make a huge change in his life and, and change the way he functions in. Yeah, he's entering uh, in a new phase, right? right? A, new, a new era of, of his life. It's no different for our heroes in this story, right? Um, Superman is more of a punishment in his mind, but he definitely changes pretty dramatically. Is it really a punishment or is it is it just he didn't he doesn't see any reason to continue on. Yeah, I just don't think he feels mm. a part of the world anymore at that point. Because be. the, what what triggers him going into this self-imposed exile is the death of Lois, isn't right. it? What he considers and to the, be the only tie that he has anymore to the human world because his parents were dead mm. and now his only connection to the human world, Lois, is gone too. So there's no point for him to be a part of it anymore. I'm trying to think, does the, does the world at that point or the, the way they portrayed in the story, do they reveal that the that the world already knew that that superman and clark kent were one and the same or is that part of him dead as a result of the fact that martha and and jonathan kent are gone lois who knew or is, is gone and so clark kent has died with their deaths yeah i don't know if um i don't if know if it says real, anything in the story about that hmm, that's an interesting point though i hadn't thought about that like i never looked to see if the world knew that clark kent was superman or anything because that's so. sort of the way that the, we were introduced to him in this story is he keeps saying, don't call me that anymore with Clark Kent. Like, right. we, like, I guess the only one that really knows is, you know, is, is Bruce and Batman and the other Woman. justice league, wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. We, she even brings it up. I mean, she's obviously calling him, so Clark, but they're Bruce. superheroes, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody in humanity seems to know that Superman is Clark Kent, right? It's just Superman. So for him, that character, that person, that persona is gone mm-hmm. um, with Makes it. Sense. You know, I think that it, it, it sets them up for a chance to sit back and think about what it means to be a hero. Right. And I think that they all come at this from a, they all come into this story in kingdom come from a very different answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Right. So this exile sets Superman up to, I'm no longer part of humanity. I want nothing to do with it anymore. You've got Batman trying to, I can't control everything in the world. I'm going to separate myself from the other heroes. I'm just going to focus in here on Gotham and I'm going to use what I am capable of doing in order to bring order and peace and security to my 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 new new empire. empire. Sorry. I didn't even know where it was going until I did it um, uh, with that. But that is kind of what he does. Right. And he sees heroism as like, I have to protect Gotham and that's the only thing that matters. And then you have, um, 
and I'm I'm a little fuzzy on Wonder Woman and her exile. We'll talk a little bit about that may, uh, uh, later. But she's exiled not only uh, really from. She's not exiled to something like what no. we see with what Superman does to himself and what Batman's doing. She's exiled away from Themyscira. from Themyscira, and and now she's trying to like be the person that's jumping in to fix everything. Yes, um, as a result of it. So they all come to it to. The, their, their conclusion as to what their exile means for them is very different um, with that. So let's talk a little mm-hmm. bit more about Superman um, with this. How do you guys... Um, super. He's super. Um, how is the um, uh, the Man of Steel, how do you feel like he's kind of portrayed differently in this story, in Kingdom Come, compared to maybe some of the other narratives um, with it? What are some of the challenges and conflicts that uh, he faces uh, in this story? And then how does... How do you feel his character evolves through it and the significance of that development? Mm. I think one of the biggest differences that we see in his character um, in the story is he's no longer that unwavering symbol of hope that we're used to. I mean, there's a reason why at the time that this comic came out, these heroes were cliche, uh, cliche, cheesy, you know, campy is because up until this point, Superman was super kind of, kind of one dimensional. Yeah. He was the, he, he couldn't be stopped. He was always optimistic about everything. He was a symbol that you could look to in times of trouble. Um, I mean, even his symbol means hope, right? So we, we immediately see in this story that he's not, He's not even no longer he's not even no longer being a symbol of hope for humanity. He's just not even hopeful himself anymore. Mm. It's 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 kind of broken that part of his person and his character uh, completely right in the beginning. Um, you know, because and, and we see something that isn't too crazy because he has um, his base of operations is called the Fortress of Solitude. So it's not surprising that he would go to some solitude every so often. But in this story, he completely separates himself from everyone he knew and, and everything, um, which isn't what we'd expect. Usually Superman tries to be in front of the action, helping um, with whatever problems might arise. And we see that he's like, oh, I'm just going to leave this be for everyone else. And that's not what you come to expect from from Superman, having seen the previous iterations of him in the comics. So. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting. You know, you talk about how he's retreated into the fortress of solitude and how that's something that's in almost in all the star, all the Superman star Wars, all the, all the Superman <laughs> stories, right? Yeah. The fortress of solitude. I remember, I remember that all the way back from the, 1979 Batman or Superman. I'm so Whoa, goodness. Right now. You're I'm th- out of it. I'm thinking about two, three things right now. All this story here. Um, <laughs> The idea of solitude is not a bad thing, no. right? And be and ha- and so not. Superman having this place where he, uh, this safe place that he's able to go and disconnect from the pressures of being this superhero, this god in in a lot of ways, and the and the pressures of that where he goes, he gets to reflect, he gets to commune with it, with mm. his father, and mm-hmm. um, with it. I mean, it's there's a very spiritual element um, to well, this, and idea. there's nothing wrong with it. it it's a it only becomes a problem when you use it to avoid right. other Yeah, things. absolutely. Solitude is good, but it also, you know, we, we we are created for community and to be a part of the world. And so this idea of solitude becoming the only reason for our existence or the only existence that we have is the challenge that we see in that. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And um, Superman has some more challenges because he is facing some internal and external conflicts. He's dealing with the new heroes and them rising up the new generation that's kind of just gotten out of hand. He's having to now deal with that when he gets out of solitude. Wonder Woman brings him out of the solitude and helps him see how wrong the world is. And so Superman takes it upon himself to fix all of this, even though it's really not his job to fix all of it, but he feels like he has to be the savior for the world. Well, it's been but, his job for years up until this right. point. And, and th- so he's struggling with that, but he's also struggling with the fact of losing Lois and losing basically all of his family at this point. And um, due to the Joker and the Magog killing Joker because he seemed he deemed it right because supervillains shouldn't be allowed to live if they do this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So. It was really. It's difficult for Superman to still be a part of this world, even after everything that he has loved has kind of been taken away from him at this point. And it was um, 
it's interesting to see how devastated he is, um, especially in the farm. He just doesn't want to deal with anything. He just doesn't want to leave or deal with that. But then when he kind of does get taken out of the farm, he doesn't address that that's still affecting him. He just goes and moves on to kind of fixing the world and its problems rather than dealing with his own. And I, even Bruce, to an extent, points that out um, when they first meet up in the back case. So he really deals a lot with that. Mm-hmm. I think it's I, I, can, I can understand this moment um, or this this scenario a little bit with the grief causing him to withdraw just because of how I felt, you know, several months back, I guess back all the way back in January when my mother passed away and mm. and I had to deal with the reality of that. And she's been one of my, you know, clo- she was very I was very close with my mother. I was very close. Um, you know, she was a big supporter of mine. She was kind of my one of my cheerleaders. Right. right? And she mm-hmm. she she always believed in me, always was, in, uh, you know, cheering me on and encouraging me and always in my corner for everything. And and with her loss, with 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 the loop with losing her it felt like um i didn't know how in a lot of ways to go on with without having that person and i i still struggle with that there are still times i mean just um uh, just uh, recently I, I something happened and i wanted to call my mom and tell her about what was going on and mm. make sure she knew about it and it's just a natural instinct and so i right. think that that that's you know, something of what he's dealing with. He doesn't, he's not, he's Superman, right? So he's not supposed to feel these things. He's not supposed to struggle. And he's lost his mother. He's lost his father. And now he's lost Lois. And he doesn't know how to function as his own person going forward with this. And so he pulls back. But the beautiful thing about the way that his character kind of moves forward in this story is through the encouragement of Wonder Woman and through his, you know, he makes a lot of mistakes in this story. I mean, his, this is a big, he's a, the major plot line of this story is really seeing it from his perspective uh, with this. He does come all the way through and finds a balance to it and finds how he can now move forward and be not the same Superman he was before, but the Superman that he needs to become um, for this new era mm-hmm. with it. So it's it's really interesting. Let's talk a little bit about Batman now. Um, I'm sure you're excited about that, uh, Nate. Um, <laughs> how do you guys feel like Batman's character is different in kingdom come than he is in some of these other stories that you've read him in what are some uh maybe the internal external challenges that uh reshape um not just batman but bruce wayne and his perspective and actions in kingdom Mm -hmm. come well i mean one thing that is a major change is batman's no longer in the front lines patrolling the streets of gotham i mean He's not a, a god like uh, Superman and, and Wonder Woman. He's going to get old. His body is going to break down. He's a person just like the rest of us. So he isn't able to be that dark knight um, that Gotham is used to. So he's had to, to, to reevaluate the way he runs things with having what he's got like those bat bots patrolling around yeah, amazing. And, and the whole city, basically every corner of the city is under surveillance and stuff. It's very much of a, a police state, militaristic state, but also like kind of behind the scenes at the same time. And it, it works. Obviously I, they say in, in the story that it's the, um, it's the safest, safest city on, on earth, which is what Bruce had wanted from the beginning, but he's not, He's not the 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 cape and cowl like he used to be. He's just kind of managing everything from the sidelines, um, which now that he's not physically in the fight, he has to be more mentally aware of everything. He uses surveillance and intelligence uh, for everything. I mean, one of the things that is spoilers, but I mean, no surprise <laughs> it's here. A, the thirty year old thirty year old story. comic, and you know, we're talking about it. So, um, one of the things that really kind of irked me for a while while I was reading it is like, why is why is Bruce on the side of of Lex? Like, I know right. I kind of get it, but like, also, I didn't think Bruce would stoop this low. And then when he revealed that it was all all a, a ploy, I'm like, all right, yeah, that's Bruce. Okay, we're good with we're good now. But he he's he's much more um, covert and subversive in the way he does things because he can't be as as physical anymore. Even though he does in the end, he's got his cool bat armor thing going on right. and it's great. But he's definitely shifted from the the Batman we we know from the past. 
Yeah, I, you know, Nate, you'll, I'm going to let you talk in a second because I know it's, mm-hmm. it's Batman, so it's your thing. But um, I think another thing that I noticed and kind of in that challenges thing, you know, externally, he's feeling less pressure from Superman. He's feeling this pressure from Wonder Woman. He's getting all of this, you know, even Lex Luthor and the what's the name of that society? I can't remember what that group that he is. The ba- the, the oh, Sinister Legion Six. of Doom. Oh. No, 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 no. It's not the Legion of Doom in this. It's something like some for something for humanity or something like that. I don't remember what it is, but um, they're they're like all coming in there with these external challenges to try to force him to to make an alliance with them to 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 confront the the metahumans and confront the challenges in the way that they all see as being the right way um with it and then internally he's he's struggling with just the reality that he's not the same as you brought it up um earlier he's not the same as superman and as um wonder woman he is human he Mm -hmm. is uh frail he is breaking down he's in this exoskeleton suit to try to keep him going on so he has to change everything so he's got all of this pressure around him i think that's a big part of who his character is in this Mm -hmm. yeah and he has some very complex relationships in this as well i mean with superman um we see the the argument in the bat cave really is one the big part Mm -hmm. and bruce keeps calling him clark because bruce doesn't really care um, what he wants because <laughs> who would so because he's Batman because he's Batman and well I think I think the one thing that I've always loved about their relationship is Bruce doesn't treat Superman any differently no. than he would treat any other being on the planet mm, not at all. he doesn't play favorites with Superman and I think that's what you're talking about right. happening in the back right. in the back cave there and because and he, he knows that even though Superman could crush him in an instant, there's still this kind of mutual respect that yeah. he wouldn't do And that. Superman's the Boy Scout, and True. Batman's always played on that. So he, it is a sign of like respect, but there's conflict there because they have different ideals on what to do with this new generation of heroes. And then when it comes to Wonder Woman, Bruce always has admired Wonder Woman, but completely disagrees on how she's handling these the dealings with the new heroes we see that at the end when they start to fight each other because bruce is like you need to stop you you see what they're doing now and we need to help work against this because you're just killing these heroes at this point and that's not how we're supposed to deal with it and then and then with lex we yeah we all thought that it was kind of this why would bruce be working with lex it doesn't Mm. make any sense but then it was a completely flying under the radar and then stabs him in the back at the end there to kind of just get closer to Captain Marvel and figure out what the deal was with him. And then he's able to figure out how to save Captain Marvel from the mind control and all that stuff leading to Superman. But you also have to kind of figure out the fact that at this point, Batman and Bruce has probably lost most of the people that he's loved Mm -hmm. as well. Alfred Mm -hmm. has to be gone. Um, We don't know where Selina Kyle is probably not alive anymore either and dick's alive we know that he's um red robin he's right? red robin right. in this story but is, and i'm trying to remember is red robin kind of part of the new justice league that superman puts together that kind of yes. yeah okay mm-hmm. so right. so dick agrees with superman which right, right. happens a lot in the comics whenever they disagree richard grayson usually goes with superman rather than was damien in this story damien wasn't a thing at 30 years oh ago. okay so oh, wait when was damien created then yeah, I was within, or late 2000s, I think. Oh, so, wow. OK. Yeah. But um, I'm not sure even if Tim Drake was in this or Jason Todd or anything like that. So he's lost a lot of people. So even Bruce has kind of lost what he has for his humanity. Um, but he kind of deals with that by making sure that Gotham it, following his actual mission at this point, instead of wondering what to do with relationships or anything like that. He's just making sure that Gotham's safe. Yeah. One thing I just kind of want to add now that I'm thinking about Damian Wayne is if they decided to do a, a, a retelling of this story somehow with some of those newer characters, I think Damian would be an interesting um, an interesting character to, to put into this because my limited um, exposure to his character is he's a bit more brutal. Oh, he definitely. is absolutely. The, he would the, be he would almost he would, be like a fit with the metahuman, right. the younger the younger he generation. Would. He would probably leave Bruce and be a part of the new metahuman. So that would be an interesting story to tell having Bruce have it's almost like a, a I can't think of an example, but you know, Bruce having to deal with the fact that his own biological son is part of the problem in a way. I think that would make for a really interesting yeah, it happened uh, story. in injustice um, yeah. as well, so yeah. Yeah, it's just a thought. Let's talk a little Wonder Woman now. 
um, with that. I mean, you mentioned her, of course, throughout the, the course of this. But let's talk a little bit about what some of the challenges with her are, what some, some of her changes are, uh, maybe some of the pivotal moments that 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 shape the character in this. Um, some of her interactions with specifically with her interactions with Batman and Superman on that. What are your what are your guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, she's. Um She's supposed to be, and how she is in most of the comics, is that she's supposed to be the ambassador for Themyscira and kind of um, going out into the world and helping people understand that Themyscira is is uh, its own rightful country and that there's it's peaceful and all that stuff. Basically, just being a normal diplomat. But um, apparently, in this storyline, she didn't do that. Uh, at least Themyscira didn't believe that she did that. Uh, so... The Amazons kind of banished her out, and now that she's banished from Themyscira, she's not a human either, so she's not accepted into society like that. So she's kind of in this limbo state of not being anywhere. She's not accepted anywhere, so she Mm -hmm. starts becoming rageful to a point because she's seeing how these heroes are being just brutal and not... um, helping people actually like she deems is what superheroes should be doing so she becomes brutal herself against that kind of coming becoming what she hates more than anything but she is kind of pushed away from that and then she forgets her amazonian teachings of of more pacifism than anything or at least resolving with peace so she becomes brutal again and so we see a lot of that as a conflict internally and externally through her. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's that, that exile, I think you, you touched on it there, but I think it's really important that idea that that exile f- from Themyscira and not a part of humanity causes her to have a major identity crisis. She isn't really sure how right. she fits into right. this. So she's trying to find her place. And so she's doing that by trying to she be the, the one thing she knows how to do. And that's be a warrior. Well, I think so. But I also think that's why she's bringing in Superman. I think that she's trying to, she's trying to, to go back and correct mistakes and wrongs and trying to bring things back because she can't figure out how she fits into it. Um, and so she's hoping Superman will help solve this problem with her so that she has a place in this. Um, but then, you know, throughout this entire thing, she's, as as she's all over the board right she starts off trying to bring in superman and trying to be a diplomat and then she gets really really intense and goes to an extreme and becomes super warrior like like you said sam Mm -hmm. but i think that as much as her methods are changing it's she's trying to remain true to who she thinks who she is Mm -hmm. and her ideals in this and so it's a really interesting take how your actions can you you can see how someone's actions may may seem inconsistent but when you look at their motivations that inconsistency may actually be coming from them trying to (laughs) trying to remain true to their mortals and their ideals and it's she's Mm -hmm. they're struggling to find out how to do that yeah um i mean nate you you brought up something that was actually a really interesting point in that she's exiled from themiscara and she's not a part of humanity either and i think that's a large reason why toward you know throughout the comic and especially at the end her and and clark can relate they're both in the same boat i mean clark's home was destroyed and any ties he had to humanity is gone while she's in the same situation. So I think that's there's that common ground amongst them being both super powerful beings that they can connect on. So there's that kind of that affection and 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 mutual understanding there. But they have their disagreements. Um we can see that in, in a lot of scenes, but I think ultimately um Clark and Diana get along. And then with with Diana and Bruce, there's there's a an, another mutual um respect because they've both been through a lot you know both being members of the justice league so they they can see eye to eye on a lot of things um and there are you know there's alliances and these understandings of of the burdens that they both have to to bear so yeah let's kind of put them all three together right let's see let's talk about how you know specifically the three the trinity right and were they established as the trinity i think we asked this i asked this earlier in the first episode but 
Had they been like known as the Trinity by this time? Basically, from what I know, yes. Because I think was I was remembering watching that uh, DC documentary that was on Max, and I thought that there was like this moment that it was around this time. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe it was a little bit before that where they were they were bringing that in. But um, trying to remember that. But let's talk a little bit about how they intersect, how they diverge, kind of how their journeys individually all come together to really make up the story here of a kingdom come talk a little bit about how sort of they, they, they intersect and they diverge in, in the way that they do things. Nate. It basically the, uh, the Trinity really shows how, um, different the world is now with superheroes than what they were, because they have this ideal of helping people is the number one kind of mission at this point, rather than taking down the supervillain, is important, but helping people first, which is an ideal that Superman's always had, which is an ideal that we've seen countless times throughout all of these heroes. But now the superheroes in this new world are more like removing the supervillains important and the humans can sort themselves out because they're lesser beings at this mm. point, which is different from what we all know as superheroes. And so that's why the Trinity believed that they needed to change back to the old times of what they were, but kind of all of these superheroes had different ideologies with how to go by it. You know, Superman inspires hope in the people and really helps them understand that, that even though they're humans, they can still look up to these people and they're, they're still um, powerful in their own right. And Batman, you know, strategizes and, and makes sure that every plan works out. Yeah. He's working behind the scenes the right. entire time, Batman right? And is working behind the scenes and Wonder, Wonder Woman kind of, balances the diplomacy sometimes and and kind of the warrior side of her character she is a uh, an ambassador which is really what she's supposed to be and and when she does that right it works out well and so all these three together really helps um show what they can do as a trinity as mm. the trinity so mm. i think each of them kind of represent a pretty interesting and and intelligent a uh, plot device in a way, or not device, but a way to, to push the narrative forward and, and to show different things like Superman, you know, his, his return and his, his kind of moral, um, moral, like rest, restoration, restitution, um, kind of is like an anchor throughout the whole yeah, story. Yeah. It's I mean, like that overarching story. Right, right. Seeing him struggle with, with coming to terms with what the world is, um, is the main kind of, arc or uh anchor and then batman he he shows us a different side kind of the underside of everything using like he doesn't have these powers so he uses his his humanity to aid the conflict and he also just is used to show a different side of the conflict you know he with him being with bruce and or um excuse me with lex and that whole side of of humans and stuff showing what they think of the conflict and then you've got wonder woman who her role shifting in throughout this, you know, from diplomat to, to warrior and, and such, um, kind of highlights the, the peace versus action balance that has to be struck. I mean, the, the old, the old guard wants peace and everything on the world while the new guard kind of don't care about that. As long as everyone's quote unquote safe from the bad guys, they don't care if, if there's peace. So it kind of, she helps highlight those, the the juxtaposition there that's interesting so why do you guys think it's important you know when we think about these kinds of stories again this whole our entire podcast is centered on this idea of pop culture is the mythology of this generation and that these types of mythological stories actually speak to something that's written within us so so how do you what, what do you think are some of the um perspectives and the the themes within this and and these characters themselves that really that really touch on that that idea well i think one thing that's important that kingdom come does is it, it gives us a different lens to look at these um familiar characters with um you know providing a, a deeper insight into their characters and seeing a different side of them that we wouldn't normally be able to see with your single issue long standing mm. legacy run comics um <clears throat> and it <coughs> excuse me it uses these characters to even com uh, uh comment on modern issues uh you, you're able to take 
something that existed back, you know, with, <clears throat> excuse me, when these uh, readers' parents were mm-hmm. were kids, mm-hmm. are able to use these characters in, in a modern setting and show that they still feel the same way, but they, they have thoughts on these current issues as well. So it really gives you a different look in these characters and deepens them and and in a way, it kind of can make you appreciate the characters more since they're not so one dimensional. Like we were talking with Superman at the beginning, he's not just the 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 Boy Scout in this story. He has real emotions. Yeah, and of course, I mean, as it is with anything, and we've talked about this in this series, we talk about this all the time. You've got these stories, this these ideas of how do you deal with generational conflict? How do you deal with grief and loss with Superman? How do you deal with age and um and and your 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 body breaking down? How do you deal with um this this feeling of of abandonment or and not necessarily abandonment she wasn't abandoned but exiled like rejected by her own people loneliness. these are all and lo- the loneliness that comes from i mean these are all issues that every single person ends up going through at some point in life you know you get older and you have to deal with those things you deal with grief and struggle as a result like superman you deal with you know you this this group that you're a part of a family or some type of a social group that you were a part of no longer wants you to be a part of them and you feel like re- you feel rejected and these stories allow us to look at these superheroes and if we really are being thoughtful it allows us to step back and think about these things um on our own uh mm, with that and, and there's also kind of a, a different <clears throat> the the altered settings and circumstances in kingdom comes doesn't really change much of the core values of the beloved characters they still believe in what they believe in no matter what and they still believe that superheroes can be right and their ability to adapt and remain resilient in these diverse narratives it, it showcases that their lasting significance and the foundational principles that they have cemented um, their place as cultural icons in this world of pop culture and everything that they've done and it's really been important and influential in dc and comics in general yeah uh, there, I, we we touched on it really, really briefly early in this episode, but I want to go back to it for uh, and talk about something for the dad moment. I am your father. So earlier we were t- when we were talking about Superman specifically, and we talked about the Fortress of Solitude, it struck me um, how I love this idea. I don't know how many times I've talked, I've thought about the Fortress of Solitude, seen it in stories, in films, in TV. Um, in and and considered the ideas, but never once it, did it click the purpose of the Fortress of Solitude. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of the Fortress of Solitude for Superman is for him to to get away from everything happening in the world around him and all the struggles and all of those those attacks and mm-hmm. burdens and weights and sit back. And what does he do? at least in the classic stories, when he goes to the Fortress of Solitude, he communes with his father. Right. Mm. He gets alone in a safe place and he spends time with his father and he learns from his father how he... About well, he learns, but also he interacts. I mean, I've seen it a lot right. more in some of the stories as we've been watching, like Superman and Lois, and right. and some of these animated things that I've been watching. He he ends up learning about how to handle situations and his powers and, and everything, and, and all of that. And I think that that's a really beautiful mm-hmm. metaphor for what those of us that you know uh, that that are are from this Judeo Christian. Um, uh, belief system, you know, that then we understand uh, that, that God is our heavenly father. Right. And so what do we, you know, we talk about it in churches, we talk about it in, you know, Sunday schools and things like that, about being like, uh, going and doing your quiet time, but it's not just about getting away and going through some ritual and reading your Bible verses for the day or reading a passage in the Bible and reading a devotional and moving on. It really, that means absolutely nothing. If that's all it is, it's getting alone and actually actually having time to separate from the things of this world and all the burdens of this world and commune with your father so that he can speak into the things that you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that that's a beautiful picture that I'd never noticed before. So I thought um, I wanted to bring that in as, as the dad yeah, moment cool. um, for this. Um, that's awesome. Um, next episode, um, we are going 
to, uh, you cannot talk about kingdom come and it's hard because this is a podcast and all we're going to be doing is talking about it, right. but you cannot have a conversation about kingdom come without really focusing in on the art of kingdom come mm, for sure. a lot of metaphors and, and symbols. Well, and just the beauty even, oh. um, of it. So we're going to look at, um, um, uh, Alex, Ross. Alex Ross. Yeah. I, I, for some reason I, I couldn't remember his first name for in this moment, but for Alex Ross, we're going to look at not just kingdom come and how revolutionary this was, but also kind of how it ties into some other things that he's done in the past, previous things, and how it's really cemented a massive legacy and it's changed the way um, comic books have have been drawn since uh, this story came out. So we're going to look at that um, and have some fun with it. So that'll be good. So, um, you know, if somebody wants to send us their thoughts or communicate with us on on, um, this series, what are some ways that they can do that? Well, we're uh, we're pretty active on Facebook. Uh, we've even got a Facebook discussion group. If you want to join that and kind of get with some other like-minded fans, you can do that. Um, we're on Twitter X, whatever. Um, Twitter. You're on the the artist the the platform formerly known as Twitter. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, we're on that. We're on Threads, kind of. We're s- sort of on Instagram a little. And I posted this week. You did. You, you, wow. you chat. You kind of like made me feel like I had to do something. See, there we go. I'll just bring it up every week, and then you'll remember. I to did. Post something. We got like two likes. Woo! A whole two. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're on that. <laughs> we are. Uh, and all of this is at Tatooine Sons S O N S. So you can look for us pretty much anywhere and uh, and share us, share your thoughts with us. And BB Nay, what's something that everyone listening to this? Uh, can do to help other people find this show. You could share it with your friends and everybody that you know. That would be you can also um, follow the podcast on whatever you're listening to right now. Sometimes they have follow stuff. Most people do. Um, most programs. Oh, almost do. all the platforms. Um, subscribing yeah. or, or following or whatever you can do, but that helps as well. And so, yeah, just share, share. And you can write us a review as well. And that helps people if they do find it, understand why you love it so much because if you haven't told them already why you love it they can see it there too so it would be really cool if you gave us a rating if you subscribed if you haven't or followed if you haven't and then gave us a rating if your platform allows it and even a review if your platform allows it and then take what you wrote in your review share this on social media with your review telling other people how i mean that would be like that'd be going that would be like super fan level that would um with that but we would truly truly and if you tagged us on it, it would help because then it helps us know no and we can respond <laughs> right. to it. so um, we would love that but that'll that'll pretty much do it all right let's go ride some rides yeah, yeah. actually we're probably riding these rides as you listen to this so exactly. we're gonna have some fun doing that but thank you so much uh, appreciate you listening thank you for my oh, we do this uh, because we love doing it but also we do this because you love listening and we appreciate you guys doing this making this part of your weekly um, you know cadence your 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 routine and every Tuesday or whatever day it is that you listen to it thank you for doing that we certainly do appreciate that you're the reason that uh, doing this podcast is even more fun than just us sitting around in a room <laughs> getting hot because the air conditioning doesn't get this room very well and uh it's 110 it's like, degrees yeah. out but thank you uh, yeah, thank for listening you. uh to this we truly appreciate that i think that'll do it for this week anything else you guys want to say may the force be with you may the force be with you may the force be with you always this party's over i like that monkey don't get technical with me Joy, please Yep, yep.